today we're going to be talking about the Z. going on guys my name is Jawad and this is my 2017 Nissan 370Z. I've owned it for about a year now and I wanted to give you guys a breakdown of what I've done so far. More specifically five mods that I think every 370Z owner should do. Mod number one. Get rid of this thing. So this is what's known as a concentric slave cylinder now this sits in the transmission over the throwout bearing which operates the clutch now as you can see this movement right here should be really smooth and I took it out at about 34,000 kilometers clutch was still working fine but you know you can start you can see that it's starting to seize now what's bad about this is that it's sitting in the transmission so all the heat that's generated within the transmission case you know this thing this thing gets exposed to that and uh, over time you know um, the seals tend to wear out and start leaking and you get this kind of motion here which is supposed to be nice and smooth now there's some other parts that go with this uh, with the system that comes from the factory let me show you those parts now so with that concentric slave cylinder you have a couple of hydraulic lines um, which which actuate that uh, that system and obviously your clutch hose as well that runs from uh, from your master cylinder to your slave and a couple brackets of course now what's the fix for this uh, factory faulty system there's a couple of different kits out there I went with the kit from Z speed also known as the CMAC so this is the box that it actually came in. Here it is, clutch moving alteration kit. It's a really nice kit. You know, they give you the full instructions and everything that comes with it, with pictures. Uh, it really helps you with, with the install. And it even comes with instructions of uh, when you get a clutch and flywheel kit as well from them. They give you instructions for how to break it in and, and any issues that you may, uh, may encounter. So along with the the kit that I got from Z Speed, I actually also changed the. Uh, yeah, come on, I also changed the uh, clutch master cylinder as well. Uh, a lot of people recommend to do it. You don't necessarily have to do it, but when you're going through the pain of uh, changing out this uh, this slave cylinder, then you know changing this um, it's it's a pretty good time to do it as well. I also changed the clutch line that runs from the master cylinder to the slave. Uh, again, from Z Speed, this is their stainless steel insulated uh, clutch line. So, what this kit does from Z Speed is that it relocates the slave cylinder from inside the case to outside. And you've got a whole fork assembly as well that attaches to the throw up bearing. I definitely recommend this kit from Z Speed. It takes care of this well known issue with the 370Zs and G37s that uh, you know this car has been around for a long time this is the number one issue with the car in my opinion and this kit definitely takes care of it brings the slave cylinder outside the case no longer exposed to heat uh, definitely more reliable the other thing as well uh, with the the factory system uh, I noticed the clutch pedal being very notchy and unpredictable so when it came to shifting gears you know it, it was very difficult with the z-speed kit the clutch engagement was a lot more predictable, a lot more comfortable, a lot more smooth. Mod number two, clutch and flywheel. So with the transmission being pulled anyways for this uh, for the CMAC kit, you know, it, I figured it was a good time to change the clutch and flywheel as well. Now, it's not necessary to change it. I just wanted to take advantage of the, uh, the transmission being pulled out. 
So I went with the Z-Speed Stage 1 uh, Quiet Clutch Kit, as they call it. So I went with the steel flywheel option, 20 pounds, single mass flywheel, and the uh, Stage 1 Clutch. So if you know this car, you'll know that it comes with a dual mass heavy steel flywheel. And the advantage of the, the, the dual mass flywheel, you know, being a lot heavier, it holds energy uh, a lot easier. But the downside is that it takes a lot, uh, a lot more energy to uh, to get the RPMs up. With the single mass flywheel, it revs a lot easier, but doesn't hold as much energy, which means that you end up, you know, increasing your fuel consumption. This is it's more of a personal choice, I guess. But for this car being, you know, being a street car, which I'm daily driving right now, I wanted something that revs a lot easier uh, and kind of improves the drivability of the car and I found that the single mass flywheel which weighs about 10 pounds less than the dual mass one it definitely uh, improves the dri drivability aspect another point to make is in terms of power I haven't really done anything to this car so when it comes to clutch options you know I was just looking for something that was a little bit better than factory but nothing crazy like stage 3 or stage 4 clutch which at this point I don't really need Mod number three, the wheels. These are Varstone ES2 wheels, which are actually TE37 reps, but from what I researched, good quality reps. So these are 19 by nine and a half in the front with a 255 40 tire, offset 22, and 19 by 10 and a half in the rear, offset 22 again, with a 285 35 tire. And in terms of the tire, I went with Indy 500s. Unacceptable, I know. Look at this gap, three fingers at least. But I am on stock suspension right now, so that'll be sorted out soon enough. In terms of the fitment, front is, I would say flush, maybe slightly poking. And the rear, flush, I guess you could also say that it's slightly inset. So I know the fitment is not perfect, you know, I'm on stock suspension, I'm on stock, you know, uh, camber and toe arm, so can't really do much about the alignment right now. But for, you know, something off the shelf, it's pretty good. Now there's so much that goes into wheels when it comes to fitment, when it comes to, you know, technical specifications. There's so many tools online. One that I would definitely recommend is Fitment Industries. They have a lot of information on that website which actually uh, shows you what other guys are running as well which actually I I use as a reference to uh, to select these wheels there are also so many online tools and calculators to calculate what the right offset is uh, for for a specific car I'll definitely link some of that stuff down below the fitment of the stock wheels on this car is so bad that as soon as you put a decent set of aftermarket wheels it completely changes the look of the car so I definitely recommend doing wheels as one of your top five mods mod number four the exhaust more specifically a muffler delete <laughs> part of this car that is just so bad from factory is the stock exhaust system you actually hear more engine noise driving around than than the actual exhaust and it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world but you know any any kind of sports car really really needs a nice sounding exhaust now of course when it comes to an exhaust system the best option is always going with a cat back or even taking it further you know upgrading your headers as well but if you're looking to save some money and just looking for something that sounds a bit better a muffler delete is definitely a good option so what you see here is basically a straight pipe from the axle back um, also you know they call it an axle back exhaust and with uh, with four inch tips 
I won't get into too much detail when it comes to the to the muffler delete. I made a whole video just about this, so I'll definitely post a link down below. Lastly, but definitely not the least, the shift knob. This is what the the stock shift knob looks like. So in terms of the height, you know, it's pretty similar. And from my calculations, this one from Mishimoto weighs about two to three times more than the uh, the factory one. So yes, this is the Mishimoto weighted shift knob. Uh, this thing is pretty much universal. You can buy it anywhere. And it comes with the different attachments as well to fit, uh, to fit your specific uh, transmission. Now there are different options specifically when it comes for the 370Zs. But like I said, this is so universal and so readily available everywhere that I just ended up going with this option. So along with the clutch slave cylinder relocation outside the transmission case, this simple upgrade is probably the best mod that I've done so far. So from factory, the clutch engagement, the, the feeling of you know shifting gears in this car is definitely not the best. So by simply you know relocating the slave cylinder and putting a heavier shift knob, the the driving feel, the, the shifting smoothness, you know, clutch engagement, like I said before, everything has improved so much and has made this car so much more enjoyable to drive. And if you think about it, you know, a mod like this is so easy to do and is, you know, relatively pretty cheap. So again, I definitely recommend getting a uh, some kind of a weighted shift knob for your 370Z. So to give you guys another look, this is what the shift knob looks like. And for Mishimoto, of course, uh, definitely feels really nice. Now I do have to sort out this issue with the, I guess the bushing, the stock bushing in here uh, is specifically made for the, the factory shift knob. So I know there are solutions out there. I have yet to figure this out. So that wraps it up guys. Five must have mods for your 370Z. So the reason for this video was just to show you guys uh, my build specifically. Now there are so many ways to modify cars. Everyone has different tastes, different preferences, different kinds of builds that they're going for. And when it comes to this car specifically, the 370Z has been around for so long now that there are so many parts available, so many different kinds of ways that you can build this car. For me, it comes down to reliability always, you know, that's always number one for me. I'm really happy with, you know, where the car is at now. Taking care of that well-known clutch slave cylinder problem from Fractory improves the reliability a lot. Definitely puts, uh, puts my mind at ease. You know, the car is not going to break down somewhere and, you know, I won't be able to shift, won't be able to engage the clutch. With the wheels, the car looks so much better, so much more mean and aggressive. And when it comes to the exhaust, you know, the car sounds a lot better. So overall, the car looks better, sounds better, drives better. I'll post a link to all the parts that I've installed so far on the car. I'll post a link to them down below. You know the drill. Comment down below, like, and subscribe. And I will see you guys in the next one.